Hello and welcome to the Hooniverse. In this video I'm going to be answering your questions in celebration of reaching 100 subscribers. I ask you, the viewers, to send in your questions via YouTube and Twitter. So let's start with... The first question. Vargas Ross asks, How did you start watching Doctor Who and become such a great Whovian? That is an absolutely fantastic question, Vargas. I began watching the show when I was 4 years old on the 26th of March, 2005. I was among the overall total of 10.81 million people watching the first episode of New Who, Rose. I was interested almost instantly. I can't remember much of what I thought about on first viewing, but I probably laughed at the Mickey Orton duplicate and was in awe of the TARDIS, a box which could hold a room larger than the space where it was parked. So I watched all of series one of Doctor Who in 2005 and I was in love with the show. There were brilliant locations, great monsters and the Daleks. They were so terrifying in that series. One Dalek could wipe out an entire base as demonstrated in the episode Dalek. So when I saw the finale, Bad Wolf and Parting of the Ways, and saw the Dalek ships with thousands of Daleks and the Dalek Emperor, it was just the greatest and scariest thing I'd ever watched. When at the end of the episode the Night Doctor regenerated him to the Tenth Doctor, I was sold on the show, and continued to watch to this day. Doctor Who had a large influence on my childhood. Most break times or lunch times at primary school, I would be the Doctor. And since I grew up attending such a small school, and when Doctor Who was at its peak popularity, my entire year group would be all be playing Doctor Who. I read Doctor Who books and learnt about the classic era of Doctor Who and how Doctor Who was made. By the time I was ten, David Tennant was leaving and Matt Smith was entering the TARDIS. I knew the answer to most questions people could ask me about Doctor Who. I think David Tennant's time in the TARDIS really made me the Whovian that I am today, as I was old enough then to understand the episodes and just loved every aspect of the show. Really, I became a Whovian because I loved the show. I was invested in the characters, monsters, and storylines. I read the books and collected the toys because I simply loved the show. And there's no other way of, to explain what made me become such a huge fan other than my childhood and an evening in March of 2005, which introduced me to Doctor Who. Right then, the next question is from PTFC Fan, who asks, Do you think Doctor Who will ever be as good as it used to be back when David Tennant was the Doctor? Well... David Tennant was the Doctor at Doctor Who's peak, with the Russell T Davis era being known to be the most popular among many New Who fans. The Tenth Doctor was the greatest Doctor to many, with Tennant's award-winning acting. But it wasn't just Tennant's acting that made the era of Who great. It was also Russell T Davis' down-to-earth storylines and the BBC's great advertising and merchandising, and the use of spin-off shows like The Sarah Jane Adventures, Torchwood, and shows like Totally Doctor Who and Doctor Who Confidential, all contributing greatly to the public perception of Doctor Who. Since Tennant, Davis, and the other brilliant members of the Doctor Who team left, the merchandising declined, the spin-off shows stopped, even Confidential ended. So Doctor Who was at its lowest when the Twelfth Doctor entered the scene. But with the success of Series 10 gaining viewers and Pearl Mackey's Bill Potts being one of the most popular companions of recent years, Doctor Who is climbing back up the ladder, but very slowly. I don't think we'll be seeing the Doctor Who as popular as it was back with... I don't think we'll be seeing Doctor Who as popular as it was with 10, but Doctor Who will keep going and who, and who knows, Chibnall and the new Doctor, whoever it might be, could bring Doctor Who a few steps up the ladder back close to the top. This can only happen when the BBC looks at Doctor Who like they did when Tennant was the Doctor, a TV show that's more than a TV show, and is something that deserves solid scheduling at 20 to 7 or 7pm, so that all family audiences can enjoy the series, unlike Series 9, which had episode broadcasting closer to 9pm. Now, the next question is from Geronimo Productions, who asks, Who is your favourite writer out of Russell and Stephen? Russell T. Davis brought Doctor Who back. He was the driving force behind the most popular era of New Who, and wrote some of the best series, storylines, and series arcs. For these reasons, I think that Russell T. Davis is my favourite showrunner. But in regards to being a writer, I have to admit Stephen Moffat does have a way of creating some brilliant original characters, and monsters, such as the Weeping Angels, the Vashti Narada, and one of the longest-running series arcs, River Song. Appearing from the 10th Doctor all the way to the 12th Doctor, I think Moffat has his moments and can create brilliant characters and monsters and single or double episode storylines, but many see Moffat to overcomplicate series arcs. So overall, Ross Davis is my favourite showrunner and Steve Moffat is my favourite writer for single or two-part storylines. Team Osman asks, is Clara 11 or 12's companion? The simple answer to this question is that Clara is both 11 and 12's companion. But the more complicated answer is that, in my opinion, Clara was a companion with the 11th Doctor, a great one at that, with that character being everything the audience wanted to see, even if her introduction was a bit complicated for her appearing in numerous different versions, in Asylum of the Daleks, and in the Christmas special, The Snowmen. Even so, an audience, as an audience, we felt like we knew Clara. However, when the 12th Doctor came along, she acted less like a companion, and more like a leader. 
of sorts, ordering the Doctor about and getting more and more reckless in Series 9, until she stopped becoming a companion and possibly became half of the hybrid, with the Twelfth Doctor being the other half. So I think Clara was a better companion with Eleven. Moving on to the next question, which is from Johnny Kilroy, who asks, what is your favourite Big Finish audio play? I'll be honest, I haven't listened to that many, but from the stories I've listened to, Spare Parts stands out to me, as it gives the same men an origin story of sorts, and explains what life on Mandas is like. I actually listened to it to help with my Series 10 finale theory video, which I'm going to take the time now to thank everyone for watching, liking, and of course commenting, as the discussion video actually had an actual conversation, theories, and discussions in the comments, and I wasn't expecting the views to go as high as they have. Now the next question is from Cyber Dan, who asks, what is your favourite version of the Cybermen? I think my favourite version of the Cybermen is either the Mondasian Cybermen, or the Parallel Earth Canary slash Canary Wharf Cybermen. I love the Mondasians because it is made clear that there are humans in there, and the Mondasian Cyberman voice. I absolutely love the voice. The Parallel Earth Cybermen are great in my opinion, I think they're perfect Cybermen for New Who, with a design that looks robust and interesting, but not overcomplicated like the Nightmare and Silver Cybermen. The Nightmare and Silver Cybermen are too much like machines, with heads that can spin all the way around, and detachable hands. So there we go. The next question is from 7th Who Knots, who asks, Do you own any Doctor Who memorabilia? If so, which piece means the most to you? I own lots of Doctor Who memorabilia, not as much as some YouTubers that you see room tours of, but I own a fair amount, from figures to mugs to posters, Sonic Screwdrivers, books, that Nintendo DS game, as well as a lot more not shown in this photo. I started watching Doctor Who in 2005 when it came back, so I was a fan of the show, when the merchandising was massive. The displays at Toys R Us were massive and had moving parts and sound effects. Sadly, merchandising and memorabilia in the world of Who has declined since around 2012. To demonstrate this, all I have to do is show you is an 11th Doctor figure from 2010 and an 11th Doctor figure from 2014. Right, so the piece of Doctor Who memorabilia that means the most to me has to be my trusty 9th and 10th Doctor Sonic Screwdriver, as it defined my childhood as a Whovian, spending endless hours battling Daleks and Cybermen. The Sonic Screwdriver itself was one which had an invisible ink nib and came with psychic paper. Sadly, I lost the nib end of the sonic screwdriver during one of the times I've moved house. But it still means a lot to me, even though it's a bit battered. The other bit of memorabilia that means a lot to me has to be in my collection of books, which look at modern and classic who, and look behind the scenes of the old and new series. These books written by Justin Richards gave me an interest in the media industry and how things were made, as well as teaching me, back in the days of Doctors 9 and 10, that Doctor Who was an old show with a great history and that the Doctor had had adventures on TV long before I was born. Great question, Zenfu Knots. Right then, the next question is from Ninja Pete, who asks which of Peter Capaldi's speeches or quotes did you find the most emotional? Well, Peter Capaldi's 12 Doctors had many great speeches from telling the boneless and flatline who he is. It really matters now, you are monsters! That is the role you seem determined to play, so it seems that I must play my... Man that stops the monsters. To his most recent and extremely emotional speech in The Doctor Falls. Who I am. It's where I stand, where I stand. It's where I fall. But my personal favourite has to be the speech and story he tells as he breaks the wall in Heaven Sent. In my opinion, one of the Twelfth Doctor's best episodes, with the whole episode basically being one massive monologue from the Doctor. The speech itself tells the story of a bird pecking away at the Diamond Mountain and the question of how many seconds in eternity. The way the speech and the editing fit together is spectacular. Here's a quick clip. Every hundred years, a little bird comes and sharpens its beak on the Diamond Mountain. <coughs> Another brilliant question. Right, next we have Harrows, who says, Firstly, love your channel, by the way. Thank you. And secondly, do you think that we will ever see a master incarnate himself again after the death of Missy? Thank you, and I do think that we'll see another incarnation of the master after Missy. But I can even see a version of the master between Sim's master and Missy, being used enabling another incarnation without Gomez needing to return. Or I could see the Cybermen finding Missy's body and potentially turning the master into a Time Lord cyber hybrid which would be a massive twist. The next question is from Twitter. Yes, I have Twitter. You can check it out in the description below. Now, the question is from at Squad 2017 or The Doctor. 
who asks, what was your opinion on the Doctor Falls and what would you rate it out of 10? I absolutely loved the Doctor Falls and would rate it a 10 out of 10, if you know the right background information. If you're a casual viewer of Doctor Who and the Doctor Falls is the only episode you've seen all series, then you will be confused. But if you've watched the series, then you will love it. The Doctor Falls not only begins the wrapping up of Peter Capaldi's time in the TARDIS, but wrapped up numerous plot lines and loose ends while delivering explosions. Two masters and some of the best use of camera angles with Bill and the Cybermen shots, and the sequence where the Doctor battles the Cybermen while the Heaven Sent Breaking the Wall theme plays. I thought it was great. Back to the YouTube comment section for the penultimate question, which is from Entertain House, who asks, what is your most underrated episode of Doctor Who? Mine is Time Heist. I actually think Time Heist was one of the best episodes of Series 8, and definitely underrated. Other than that, my most underrated episode of Doctor Who is Planet of the Dead, from the Doctor Who specials. It is commonly overlooked when you mention David Tennant's final adventures in the TARDIS. Everyone thinks of The Waters of Mars, which was a great episode, and The End of Time Parts 1 and 2, which were also great. But everyone forgets about the one-hour Easter special, which saw the Doctor, a museum thief, and civilians stuck on an alien world with no way home when a bus travels through a wormhole. If you haven't seen it, then I really do recommend it. And the final question. The oldest question in the universe hidden in plain sight. Would you like to know what it is? Yes. How did I get started on YouTube in the first place? This question was asked on Twitter by Dave Knight, at Dave W. Knight, and really is a great question. So, at the moment I am studying media studies at college, learning about everything from film and TV to radio and print. Now I was coming to the end of my first year, as I had completed all my coursework, meaning that I needed something to do while I waited to continue my studies in September. So, as my teachers and lecturers were telling the class we need to use our time off productively by making some kind of media, I asked what kind specifically, and my lecturer said it should involve script writing, editing, and some filming if possible, and the use of research and imagination. So that day I returned to the college bus to go home and began to talk to my friends. Soon the conversation turned into Doctor Who and we began to discuss what would happen in series 10, theories for past episodes, and generally just talking about the show. Now talking about Doctor Who that day made all the difference, probably more than any other day, as through creating these theories and ideas, one of which was talking about the possible workings and science of the sonic screwdriver, that night I went home after saying I would see if there were anything on YouTube, and there wasn't really anything on the workings of the sonic, or any of the stuff we talked about. So, I decided to create a YouTube channel, to not only share my knowledge and ideas as a Whovian, but to improve my media knowledge and editing skills. I decided my videos should be informative and entertaining, with trailers and theories slash discussions becoming the main structure of the channel. The name of the channel, The Hooniverse, was chosen because I wanted to make videos about all the elements of The Hooniverse, be it Classic Who, or New Who, or the spin-offs. I never imagined to have so many people watching my videos, never mind actually subscribing. With that number at this current moment being 208, I can't thank you enough. Now that's all the questions I have been asked right now, so I better wrap up the video. But not without leaving a link to every channel and Twitter account that's asked the question. So you can check out all their great content as well, from competition winning figure adventures to reaction videos. Check out the links in the description below. And finally, series 10 may have ended, but the channel hasn't... So be prepared for more theories, more trailers, and all those episode reviews and easter egg videos from series 10, which I still need to make. While I go off and do some of that, I hope you stick around and check out some of the other videos on the Hooniverse. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye